Hello everybody and welcome! I have noticed some comments of you guys sounding a bit frustrated at how far us KSP YouTubers appear to be while some of you still struggle to get to the moon. Well, don't be frustrated any longer because I got your back. Here's a short tutorial on how to get to the moon the easy way. In order to know the mission requirements, let's take a look at the Delta V map as I mentioned in my 7 basic tips and tricks video. You can watch that by clicking on the upper right hand side of your screen. In both the case of a mission to the moon or Minmus, you need around 5000 meters per second of delta V starting from Kerbin's surface just to land on the surface of either body. While the moon is a lot easier to get to in regards to the transfer maneuver, Minmus is a lot easier to land on due to its lower gravity. First, we're going to need a vehicle. I'm going to use Kerbal Engineer Redux like I also recommended in my 7 tips video one week ago. We're going to build a very simple rocket designed to land on the moon and get back home. First let's start with the lander and return vehicle. Let's make this a one-seater and let's assume this capsule is also going to get back to Kerbin, so we will need a heat shield and a parachute. Now, regarding the moon itself, we're going to need about 600 meters per second to land and of course the same amount to get back into orbit. I like to add a healthy safety margin to that and we also need about 300 meters per second to get back to Kerbin. So I think we will be safe with about 2000 meters per second for the lander. Don't forget to add landing legs and solar panels since this is going to be in space for a while. I also like to add batteries just in case. Now the other figure besides delta V you're going to have to worry about is the thrust to weight ratio. In Kerbal Engineer click on the body button and select the moon and hope that the number is above 1. With almost 4 we are very much on the safe side. For a lander vehicle I would not recommend having a thrust to weight ratio of less than 2. Now we have something that can get us onto the moon and safely back to Kerbin. But how to get to the moon? We need around 900 meters per second of delta V to get an encounter with the moon starting from a low Kerbin orbit around 80 kilometers. Another around 300 to get into a safe circular orbit. So again with a bit of a safety margin let's make this about 1500 meters per second of delta V. I like to use the Terrier engine since it is very light and efficient. Looking at its thrust to weight ratio in regard to Kerbin, it is lower than 1, but since we will already be in orbit, it does not matter. Since we need up to 3500 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit, this booster stage will be more than enough. Now, since Kerbin has an atmosphere, let's quickly check in Kerbal Engineer if the spaceship here is going to suffice. And yes, the thrust to weight ratio is still high enough to get out of the atmosphere. The launch itself is pretty straightforward. Just launch straight up and then start tilting your rocket towards a 90 degree angle slowly starting at around 1 km above ground. I usually try to keep my thrust to weight ratio at around 2 but below 2.5. Once you reach about 30 or 40 kilometers, you should almost already be flat out and burning parallel to the ground. If you want to avoid space debris, use the transfer stage to finalize your circularization burn and let the booster drop back to the ground. Let's take a look at how well our orbit is aligned with that of the moon. For that we're going to hover our mouse above the ascending or descending nodes, AN or DN respectively. Zero would be ideal of course, but this is ok as well. By the way, you can keep any data in map view available when right clicking on it. So getting to the moon involves a simple trick. If you see it on the horizon, blast your engines prograde, that is in the direction you're orbiting and wait until you get an encounter. This also works by eyeballing it out of the map view like I'm doing here. Personally, I like to focus the view on the moon, just click on it and select focus view so I can fine tune my maneuver. Both while planning as well as while performing the burn, I like to right click on the periapsis icon so I can monitor how close to the moon I'm going to get. Anything above 10,000 meters is totally safe. I usually aim for around 15,000, purely out of habit.
The most effective way to circularize is, of course, at periapsis. As expected, we have some reserves left in our tank. This can now be used to start the landing and save ourselves some delta V for the descent. When doing that, the most common way to do it is to set stability control to retrograde and just burn until you land. I, however, prefer to cancel out the horizontal velocity first, meaning I burn while aiming right at the horizon. Kerbal Engineer gives me a nice readout of my vertical and horizontal velocities, otherwise just watch how the retrograde marker moves. Once it is aiming straight up, I set SAS to retrograde and carefully watch the descent. The most efficient way, of course, would be to fire your engine throttled in such a way that you perform a completely linear reduction of your velocity. However, since I am not a computer, I eyeball it. Thanks to Kerbal Engineer, I can set it so that my thrust to weight ratio is a bit above 1 and then see how far this will get me. You don't want to reduce your velocity too fast, otherwise the descent will take too long and you will burn too much fuel. You also don't want to reduce your velocity too slowly, otherwise... BOOM! In such a situation, Wixave is your friend! AGAIN! Let your lander descend and take care that its velocity is lower than 10 meters per second, otherwise you will probably damage something on touchdown. Also, the more gently you touch down, the less likely it is your vehicle will bounce around and maybe tip over. Something that can happen very easily on inclined surfaces. Congratulations! You have successfully landed on the moon. That in itself is a big achievement in Kerbal Space Program because you can apply the basic principles of how to land on another celestial body to any other planet or moon in the universe. Ok, since we have landed safely, let's head back home. Blast off and almost immediately tip over towards 90 degree heading. Since the moon does not have an atmosphere, you don't need to head straight up to counter aerodynamic forces. At first it is a bit counterintuitive, since you are going to reach your desired apoapsis later than if you launch on a steeper trajectory. However, since this also raises your periapsis, you are going to find that you will need a lot less delta V for your circularization burn. And now that is done, let's perform our final maneuver, the burn back to Kerbin. Now let me tell you a bit about orbital mechanics. If you want to get somewhere outside of the orbit of the planet you are orbiting, burn on the side further away from the center of the planet's orbit. If you want to go inwards, burn on the inside. Since we want to go back to Kerbin, we choose to burn on the side closer to Kerbin. You can apply this principle on a larger scale as well, if you, for instance, want to get either Eve and Moho burn on the side of Kerbin lit by the Sun, if you want to get Duna, Dress, Jewel and Elu burn when in the Shadow Zone. Anyhow, let's get back to getting back. I usually set my periapsis at around 40 kilometers. This is enough for a significant reduction in velocity, but not steep enough to let your vehicle completely burn up in Kerbin's atmosphere. And that's it! That's how you could plan and execute a simple mission to the moon. I hope there was some info in there that you can use in your game. Keep in mind that many of the principles that apply to this mission can also be applied to journeys to other planets. That's the beauty of physics. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.